Hi guys, I'm back again, and now we are here at the conclusion of our essay. It is so exciting. Like, we've written so much. Um, we've been through so much this semester. kimberly has been through so much, and now, like, this essay's almost done, and we should just feel so good about ourselves. So, how do you write a conclusion? Well, just like the introduction was three sentences, your conclusion can be three sentences, meaning your conclusion can be as easy as one, two, three. So let's get started. All right, so to conclude your essay, reiterate the theme of the novel as related to your character. Now remember theme, we had a theme in our thesis, that was the idea. So you wanna really focus on whatever theme or lesson you mentioned in your thesis and suggest how the book could impact someone's life based on the lessons they could learn. Now this is gonna be the hardest part because you're gonna be like, what? Um, what could someone learn from this? So this is the like the part of the thesis where you really have to think. The rest of it is just like, oh, I've done all this work. Let me pull it all together. All right. So um, your first sentence of your inter of your conclusion. Um, I like to call this the remixed thesis. So I like to consider this um, a remix of your thesis. Now, what do I mean by that? You basically are going to say the same thing you said in your thesis, but your essay is not long enough for people to forget if you have the exact same sentence in there twice. You can't say the exact same thing. You can say the same thing slightly differently, like you're paraphrasing yourself. So I gave you a little template, and then I'm going to take my thesis and play with it. So character transformation from blank to blank reveals blank, okay, which is pretty much your thesis. So let me grab my thesis from earlier in this document and let's remix it. Remix. Radio plays remix. That's like a really old reference to a 90s song, so I don't really even know why I did that other than it was it was pretty funny to me. Okay, here's my thesis. Now, my thesis is just plopped here in this document because I kept plopping it in my document to help me remember. Your thesis needs to be the last sentence of your introduction. So what I noticed when I started grading introductions is that some people wrote their thesis. I was like, great thesis. And then I read their introduction and I was like, where's that great thesis? You wrote that thesis to go in your intro. So make sure that the thesis you wrote is the last sentence of your introduction. All right, let me remix this thesis. All right, in the novel, Amaka, evolves from a narrow-minded girl who is critical of her cousin's wealth to a compassionate friend who champions Cambelli's attempts to gain independence, revealing the theme that believing a single story about a person will always lead to misunderstanding. All right, so even though I gave you this little template up here, in my brain, the easiest way to remix something is to flip the order, okay? So my sentence order was character transformation, plus theme. Now I'm going to flip it. I'm going to say theme and then characters transformation. All right, so I'm going to take my theme. Make that the start. Now, I still have to reword it in some ways. All right. Okay, so I'm going to say, because remember, I need to start with a transition word. At the beginning, beginning and at the beginning, that's a transition phrase. At the beginning of the novel, Amaka. He leaves a single story about, now I'm not going to say a person um, because I don't have to have this as universal right now. Um, the universal sentence will be at the end. So I just had a thought. That's what this face means. But I'll share that thought at the end because I feel like if I interrupt myself right now, it's going to be confusing. So remember that thought I had. All right. At the beginning of the novel, Amaka believed a single story about her cousin, Kambili. Well, I don't have to say her cousin. I'm going to say Kambili about Kambili, which led led to a misunderstanding of Kambili's personality and prevented 
the cousins from bonding until now I'm, I'm thinking about chapters. So it took until like chapter 12. There's 17 chapters in the novel. It was way over halfway. Um, I was going to try to like do a fraction, like math, and make it skinny, but then that was too much. Um, then it's because it's for bonding. And so. I'm not Compassionate, compassionate. Okay, let's let's find a word for compassionate. And gain sympathy. Okay, so, so Martha finally gained insight into her cousin's life and was able to feel sympathy. Okay, so that's my remix at this point. Okay. At the beginning of the novel, Amaka believed a single story about Kambili, which led to a misunderstanding of Kambili's personality and prevented the cousins from bonding until Amaka finally gained insight. Mm, I don't like this, and I didn't like it when I wrote it. Until Amaka finally felt sympathy for Kambili after her hospitalization. Okay. Let's stick with that for now. Okay. So I re remixed my thesis. Um, now, I feel like I erased a sentence in this um, thing but who knows um because now what i normally would do is like reiterate um some of my evidence but it says explain how the character could inspire people like i think i i erased something so let me pause and open another document and see what it actually said okay so i didn't erase the sentence um i gave you a slightly different outline for your conclusion than i normally do but you know what it's still gonna work so i'm just gonna go with what i have in the document because that's what you have and it'll work all right explain how the character for me it's a mock could inspire people as a positive or negative example okay that's easy Amaka's transformation Demonstrate. I feel like I've already said demonstrates. I feel like I'm using the word demonstrates enough a lot. So I'm just going to do it because it's my rough draft. And I'll fix it later if I use it too much. Marco's transformation demonstrates that one's first impression is often incomplete and Judging others too quickly, judging others too quickly, I'm distracted by this, so I just got to fix that real fast. I like even forgot where I was going. Judging others too quickly is, I want to say it's a bad thing to do, but that's not, you know, a cool thing to write. So I'm trying to think of a better way to say it. And all my brain is like, is a bad thing to do. Is a bad thing to do. Judging others too quickly. <sighs> Maka's transformation demonstrates that one's first impression is often incomplete. And judging others too quickly. is a bad thing to do. I mean, like, that's not a good thing to write, but that's all that my brain is saying. And so 
just revise it later, right? All right. Explain who should read the book or what the world could learn from your character. Ah, now I got this part down pat because I already know what I'm going to say. All right. In the real world, many teenagers behave just like a Martha and respond negatively to any peer who behaves abnormally. They may think the um, quiet kid is a snob, or they may think the loud kid is a mm, is a name. However, just like Maka learns in the novel, all teenagers would benefit from withholding their judgment of others and seeking to cover and seeking to uncover I'm not going to face that. It's holding a dozen of others and being more compassionate. Boom! That's a conclusion. Is it a good conclusion? I mean, it does what the outline has to do. Is it the best conclusion I've ever written? No, but let's check the outline I gave you and let's see what it did. All right, so remixing my thesis statement. At the beginning of the novel, Amaka believed a single story about Kambili, which led to a misunderstanding of Kambili's personality. So, like, I'm going to take that out because misunderstanding, I feel like that's Which led to a misunderstanding and prevented the cousins from bonding until Amaka finally felt sympathy for Kambili after her hospitalization. Okay. Amaka's transformation demonstrates that one's first impression is often incomplete and judging others too quickly is a bad thing to do. Okay, I remember I was like, that's not what I should say. Um, so now I'm gonna fix that. And one should refrain from judging others too quickly. Now you might wonder why I'm using the phrase one um, in writing, specifically college level writing, you want to avoid like speaking directly to your reader and saying you 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 this you that because it kind of makes the reader feel like you're judging me so the word one is a way of saying like a single person without saying you um or just like a person a person a person i could say a mockus transformation demonstrates that a person's first impression is often incomplete and that person should refrain but one is just sort of a simplified way of doing that in the real world, many teenagers behave just like a maka and respond negatively to any peer who behaves abnormally. They may think the quiet kid is a snob or, or that the loud kid is annoying. However, just like a maka learns in the novel, all teenagers would benefit from withholding their judgment of others and being more compassionate. You know, the biggest critique of that is like, really, that applies to all people. But I said, explain who should read the book or what the world could learn from your character. Right. So I just was like teenagers. But you could also use a more specific example. So like the point I'm trying to make is that, oh, well, people shouldn't um, judge others too quickly. So I could come up with an ex like a specific example of someone who's judged someone else too quickly. Um, like 
if you've been watching the Tiger King, I know that's the big thing right now. Like, you know, the Tiger King, both Carol Baskin and um, Joe Exotic, like, weren't, they were judging each other too quickly. So I could be like, I could take this out. And I could say, um, this theme is found in many, um, in many other books and films. For example, in the Tiger King. Is it called the Tiger King or just Tiger King? So yeah, I should look better. And I'll just say Tiger King. Tiger King, and then I would like italicize that or whatever um, because it's a title. I guess I should just look it up, but I don't like I come up with one thing. So it's just not a title. Wait, animated. Not animated. I don't know why it said animated. That freaked me out. All right. This theme is found in many other books and films. For example, in Tiger King, both Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin judged each other too quickly. And if they had games, compassion like Amatha did the documentary would have had a much different ending. So that's another example of what you could do. You know, I was like, I was telling you connect it to the world. So like I made a connection to the Tiger King. Right. So that's another example. So earlier in the, um, in the video when I was like, oh, I have a thought, but I'm not going to like say it right now because I'm trying not to interrupt myself. So I had said the introduction was like a triangle. It goes from broad to specific. Let's think about our conclusion as the inverted version of that triangle. So like a pyramid, um, it goes from specific too broad. So you want to start with like specific mention of your thesis and then broaden it out. Like this is what it, we're talking about in the book, but let's connect it to the world. So we had intro that was broad to specific. And now our conclusion is specific to broad. So they're kind of like the inverse or flip opposite of each other, the foil of each other literature term. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, if it wasn't, join me on Zoom on, I'll probably do this on Zoom on Wednesday and Thursday, um, maybe on Tuesday if people want it, but I'll write conclusions live on Zoom. I'm gonna take these two different conclusions and post them with this video. Hope it helped. And that is the conclusion to this video. I'm back because I hit the stop button too early. I was going to say that is the conclusion to this video on conclusions.